install this. There it is. My input, my output. Three and a half, four and a half with a uh, gear reduction in there, but I'm pretty close to one to one basically gearbox. Either way, check it out. Just sexy when it's all nicely painted black there. So all you can see, still got the vent on that side and the filler on this side. And then I got the old vent bunged off. So no, uh, no uh, issues there. I can fill it up with oil, change the oil. Boom, unreal, this is dope. Okay, let's get this installed in the musty because that's what needs to happen because I'm sick and tired of working on it and not mowing it. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do or I've done is made two of these little brackets that are gonna bolt onto the bottom of the 90 degree box. So I'll show you what that looks like. There you go. So as you can see, I now have this side all supported for any counter torque now to try and torque this guy sideways. No. <laughs> All right, so beautifully bent up, nicely done. Kudos to myself. All right, so you can see it all up in there. Just beautiful. So lots of work coming together. Everything's getting done. I'm all done for today, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so back in the garage and I'm going over some clutch things now. So since I got this 90 degree box mounted where I want it, it's time to figure out what size belt I have. Now, I'll get up in here so you guys can see. All right, so here's my clutch set up in here. I have two pulleys and then it gets, goes back and forth like that with the belt. There's the engine up top there. All right, so there's in the back here up top, there's a uh, spacer that was all worn out. So this was super sloppy. So I had to take that out, put one in the lathe, made one. Now it's all perfect. So I'm just getting the belt back to here. Now, lucky for me, I have a stupid amount of belts. This isn't even all of them. This is just close to the sizes that I need. So I got lots of long ones, medium ones, and the short ones are still in the uh, shed there. Anyways. All these belts, and I managed to find these two. This one's just too small, that one's just too big, so I gotta find a belt that's somewhere in between. So, I'm gonna head out to the Princess Auto, which is my local store, and I'm gonna go put these two in the belt measure and then get one that's in between. So, it's a good solution, easy to go. If you don't have, obviously, a shit ton of belts to go through, a piece of string, run it through, tie a knot, that will give you a close uh, enough estimate to where you want honestly i'm probably gonna go get three or two belts because the middle one's probably not gonna work for some reason it always ends up all right we found a belt and it only took two attempts which is unreal and it only would have took one but i had to second guess myself so 65 inches people is what it takes so i had to cut out some more bracing in here as you can see my fresh cuts right here that went across and that did some uh, bracketing and whatnot, but I don't need it in there anymore because I can build better. Nice and tight, and then I can clutch it on top. All right, so you can see the belt get loose. So obviously I still gotta test this and burn a belt in because uh, any new belt's gonna have a little bit of traction on it and catch. So uh, what I do is I just uh, hold it halfway, give her some revs, it'll burn in pretty quick, and then you should be good to go. So check that out, I got the dual spring. I am gonna change this because I wanna run a idler pull in here just to add just that much more tension into this. But with doing that, I get really close to uh, this spring. So I'm actually gonna cut this plate off here and uh, remount the spring closer over to here. Then. And on top of all this, a skid plate that's gonna go underneath everything. So freaking rights so though, check it out. would like to do is if you can see this 
We got that much play in here. And that's all in um, this little joint right there. So you can see, got lots of, lots of movement stuff. So I'm just gonna do some work in there to tighten that all up. You can see the bar goes across and I got some spacers or um, some sleeves on either end. So I'm gonna make those a little tighter. Make this all just a super tight setup because uh, winter's coming along and we need to be in the snow. So let's do it. All right, it's the next day. Let's go over some of the work I did. Let's get to it. All right. So it doesn't look like anything from up here. But look at all the tools and stuff. Okay, let's get under this. All right, look at. All right, so the belt's all up in there now. You see it get nice and loose. So I added in this guy. It's just got a tiny bolt-in bracket. Works really freaking well. It's all lined up, easy, easy. So it's a good sweet add-on to keep the belt nice and tight in there. Again, 65 inch belt, fixed the clutch system in there. Might be hard to, to see, sorry. But fix the clutch system up in there. And uh, yeah, the last thing to do is get rid of that little bit of slot, which I, I got rid of a little bit of it, as you can see from before. So it's time to get rid of that last little bit and hopefully we're on our way. All right, so the other thing got done was paint the transaxle. Now of course I went with the classic black because uh, I get this qu question quite a lot actually. And I think it's time I go over it. I get a question a lot, when are you gonna paint musty? Like, or why not paint parts on it and stuff? And I do, simple, kinda. All right, so I don't wanna paint musty because it's got the patina that I really like, that mustard color gave it its name, and I want it to rust and I want it to get older. <laughs> That's the cool beauty part of this build. Other builds we will paint. You guys will be seeing Scrappy got painted, so stay tuned for that one, unless we already showed it. Then you must like it better. But I do wanna paint a few parts. Obviously the transaxle was green, and the 90 degree box was an off black that I had to mess up a bunch and it had aluminum in it because of took off the paint. Whatever it is, I painted those parts. I painted the transaxle black. I will be painting a few parts on it. I will be adding some new tube with the M600 Rogue Fab tube bender in a bit here. But yeah, that's kind of a get quick point there. I'm not painting everything. I want the patina. I like the patina, but I do got to paint a few things because I don't like a few things. So I'm picky that way, but not picky entirely, if you get that. Okay, let's get back to working. Check this out. I am loving it. There's no like any movement now like that that little bit of movement is actually moving the clutch So all I did was Weld a half semicircle washer in there and that got rid of all the play so that wears out you just add another one on so super simple and Now I don't have anything That's actually clutch engagement so rock on super sweet just little things, right? I mean, your your clutch might be very sloppy, and it's it's small things like that that all add up, and there's a series of small little things will add up to a lot of play. So go through all your systems. If you have a clutch, obviously you have a clutch, go through it. Look where all the linkages add up. There's probably a lot of loose fittings. So go back through there, weld some new ones, make your own, like make it custom, people. It's fun doing it that way. All right, so the next piece of the puzzle, some skid plate mounts. So I use my rib nut gun and compressed my compressible nuts basically with the rib nut gun. It works awesome. If you don't have it, check Amazon, it's super cheap. Um, I can just thread a bolt in there now, no nut on the top, gets compressed. So works great. I'm gonna mount these up underneath and I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, check it out. That is a skid plate. So you can see my angle iron pieces on the side and then my rib nuts. I only got a couple bolts in right now, but it's all gonna work. That's nice and solid. That was an old TV stand mount. That was inside of plastic at the bottom of a TV. I've had that in there since I bought my TV about a year and a half ago. So <laughs> it uh, surprisingly very strong just because of the way it's dimpled in the metal. So I really like it, it works good and it's a free piece of metal and I love free. And this mower's built off a lot of free parts, which is awesome. Recycle, reuse. All right, so now I wanna start adding onto the skid Skid plate, I'd like to get a back piece built here. That comes around the bottom here, comes around 
I don't know exactly how I'm going to build it. I think I want to build it off of that skid plate and then down and around. I'm not too sure yet. I'm going to let the old brain do some thinking. I'll probably lay under here for a bit and figure it out. But uh, yeah, I'm really digging that. And that's like, that's right up there. Like I got so much clearance now under here. It's unreal. Just my steering up front hanging a little low, which isn't low. I've never hit it on anything, which is surprising, but... I guess I'm just good at what to do. <laughs> okay, let's get to the next step, which is, uh, I don't know, so I'll figure that out. All right, so like I was saying before, we are taking off this style hydraulic brakes. And uh, for one, check out this guy's new cut. Ooh. Fresh. Shit. Do the honors, Toe. Well. Naked. Done. Weird. So there is going to be some tube work going on in here. Gonna get some barrage going down and a nice grab handle. I got the hydraulic brakes ordered on, in on uh, on Amazon, so that'll be coming in. And then I gotta get some tube in, redo some tube in this area, and then build a new tube frame for the hydro setup. So that's gonna be sweet. Uh, that'll be a little bit further down the road. We got some other stuff cooking right now. I'm actually building a skid plate for the 90 degree angle gearbox. So. You can see I got some bent metal. I didn't have a uh, long enough piece, so I had to actually bend a new piece. So, nice heavy duty. I'll show you guys where that goes underneath in a minute. All right, so the idea with my uh, curved piece of metal here is to get it right about there. That way my 90 degree box is covered, my open pulley is covered, and I'll clean this up with a nice piece of metal as well, and I'll have a full skid plate that's nicely warped around everything. Super sweet, I'm gonna add off of the these two bottom bolts, two little guys that come down and weld onto here, and then off of this side, I'll come up to the frame with a 3 8 bolt, so that everything's unboltable, the whole skid plate will be one piece. It'll be like 10 bolts, you take it off, but it is what it is, it'll give me access to everything I need. And nice heavy duty skid plate, I'll be able to knock it off some rocks and bounce this whole mower right over a rock. But let's not do that. Okay, let's get to mounting this. Alright, so we got the skid plate uh, tack welded and mounted up in there. And as you can see, working pretty good. So, it's just tack welded up top there. My next issue I'm facing is if you look right here. Well, there's some flex there because, uh, well, there's nothing holding this on. It's just, it needs a bracket. So, I'm thinking of taking this piece of paper and putting it somewhere in there, drawing it out, tracing it, and I'll probably come up with something like this. That will go right in there. And then if I work a little harder, it should look something like this. There we go. That's going to get bolted in there, welded on, and then that will be a nice, easy, uh, plate there to hold everything in uh, place so that will get welded onto there bolted onto here and then this back side on this side sorry on that side i'm gonna build a whole nother plate and i'll show you that in a minute let's get it done all right so there we go all bolted in all i have to do is run a couple beads on either side and then that thing ain't going anywhere i love the way that looks it's gonna be super versatile and uh strong that's the big one Okay, so let's get that welded and move on to the other side now. All right, so it's like day six, maybe day seven now, and uh, it's a Sunday, we're getting some more work done. So I got that little aluminum shroud piece that I was showing you made, and I got the skid plate taken off. So, kind of looks weird, as it should, because it's on a lawnmower, but uh, we got it all here. I gotta fully weld this and everything to get make it all nice. All right. While I'm waiting for the skid plate to dry in some of the mountain brackets, I decided I'd make one of these little guys. So while Tony was making the shifter plate, I was busy on the lathe making this little guy. So tap the end there for 3 8 while the 3 8 bolt on there. And uh, this is going to go on a bolt as a belt guard. So I'll show you that right now. All right. So as you can see, my belt comes over here. And when I give it the clutch there it gets pretty loose and it kind of goes over here this is a sharp edge not that it would cut it but thought if I made this guy go in over here with that threaded in all the way up there now I have a removable belt 
keeper. And you can see when it gets loose, it hits there. So, super simple, super easy, nothing to it. All right, so with the rest of the skid plate mounted, I finished up my aluminum bit, put some rib nuts in it, and we are able to install it. So you can see I got a couple holes there. It's just going to be an inspection cover that will get rid of any uh, debris or snow from coming in here. So one of the issues we have on our rear pulleys is, or any pulleys I guess you'd say, we like going through sticks, we like going through trees and tall grass and snow and mud, right? So it comes in and it gets gummed up where your pulleys is or a stick will come poking through and delodge your belt because that thing's ripping so anything that gets pulled in there will delodge it. So with a little inspection cover on there, Boom. Okay, so I'll put this on, show you guys what it looks like. Otherwise, skid plate is in there, and it's looking killer. That's going to be able to knock some rocks hard. Looks a little something like that. Decent. So I still got a little bit of room up top there to get my nut so that I can unbolt this whole thing. But if I need to get in here, inspection cover, and obviously I can get in because I'll have just a little bit of room into here to get up if I need to get to the belt. Hopefully I won't. This setup should just work phenomenal. So like I said, rib nutted these guys in, two nuts, half inch bolts. Everything's either half inch or 14 mil or 9 16 13 mil, 14 mil kind of stuff. So that's all I'm gonna carry. I can bring my electric ratchet and take everything off in a few seconds if I have to. But otherwise, super strong. I got a shit ton of clearance all up in here. I got a low spot here, but it's a big old plate, so I'm not too worried. All right, I'm all done for the day. It's Sunday. Me and the lady friend are gonna go watch some TV, drink some beers, and uh, have a good day. So, see you guys tomorrow morning. Let's get at it, get to it, and get done. <music>